hello again viewers and welcome back this is Charlie with house call auto repair and today we've got a 2007 Chevy Trailblazer we're gonna be replacing the uh, the back brakes in this today and then the next one we're gonna be doing the front brakes but for now we're just gonna be concentrating on these back brakes because they are worn right down to the point where there's literally uh, nothing left to them As per usual, you want to loosen up all your lug nuts before you get started. Do the same thing on the other side. And once you got all your lug nuts loosened up, you want to jack the vehicle up. And once you've got your vehicle up at a safe height, grab all your jack stands, position your jack stands underneath the axle. All right, not positioning very well. Once you got your jack stands in place, go ahead and lower the vehicle down. And go ahead and spin your lug nuts off the rest of the way. I like to leave the jack underneath the vehicle just to help support it, just in case the jack stand should shift or anything like that. In this particular case, there wasn't really any easy spot because of the sway bar. Wasn't in a really good, convenient spot to put those jack stands. Slide the tire underneath. That's a bit worn out. And these are a little bit sloppy to boot. So, we got rear sway bar links, sway bar mount bushings. Everything else, eh, probably some new shock absorbers. Frames looking good here. It almost looks like the bushings shifted a little bit towards the frame, but. That's interesting. We got. Uh, Oh, literally nothing left in there. At least nothing on the outboard. The inboard's got a little bit left on it, but... Uh, rusty, rusty. Got the 14 millimeter on the back side of the caliper. You grab a C-clamp. Push the piston back a little bit so we can get it off the rotor. It's probably a significant significant lip, lip on this rotor. Okay, just up over the top of the banjo bolt. Single piston caliper. Push the piston back just a little bit. Again, get the gap opening up in here so you can see that the caliper's moving. Caliper's moving nice and easy so we don't have any issues with the caliper as far as I can see. Oh nice. Moves nice and easy. It's also lightweight I can tell by the aluminum 14 millimeter. Let's get in here and get these bolts out. Spin both of these out by hand now, nice and easy. Hold your 
caliper in place so it doesn't free fall on you. There's two bolts. Again, very, very lightweight. This one you could probably safely hang, but we're not going to. We're just going to set it up here. We'll go grab a hook real quick just to make sure that this thing doesn't free fall. There really isn't much of any place in here to hook this, but I think we can find a spot somewhere in here, I'm sure. Well, that doesn't really support it, but it'll keep it from falling down freely. That's frozen solid in there. So is that one. All right. Oh, that boot's not looking healthy. That one's not looking healthy either. So we're probably going to need a boot kit for this. Space on that's even. Oh, what a mess. Nice thick layering of rust. This, all of this in here is rusted solid. There's, there's, I got a little movement in that, but not much. So let's get the caliper bracket out. That's an 18 millimeter. too far with the bolt, now my wrench is stuck. So I'm going to go back in just a little bit. Get my wrench back off the bolt. There's the lower bolt. And same thing on the other one. Oh joy. Alright, you got about an eighth of an inch on the inside, and about the same on the outside, so kind of even wear, but very, 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 very stuck in the bracket. I'm going to take note that there's squealers inboard and outboard on these, but what I was talking about with the boot is this right here. See those cracks? That's going to let moisture in, and it's going to end up inevitably ruining this. Same thing over on this side, you see the wetness, that's because it's already been leaking the grease. So we're going to have to go get a new boot kit for this. I realize most of you guys probably already know how to open up a box. Scissors, knife, easy, but if you don't have scissors or a knife handy, you run into these straps. A little trick I learned years ago. Turn, grab a hold of the, the strap, flip it over backwards, and catch the lip on the inside edge of it, right there, and then go ahead and pull on that. And that'll allow you to snap the strap. Same thing on the other side. It, all, it never works on the outside, it only seems to work on the inside. There's our Detroit Axle. Package one of two. The other one says one of two also, so I don't get it. There's our new brake shoes or brake pads. Ooh, a nice fancy silver packet of grease. Interesting. There's our hardware clips and our brake brake pads. We do not, however, have little boots that we need so we're gonna have to cut this one short for now and go get the little rubber boots that we need uh, yeah I've got a 2007 uh, GMC or Chevy Trailblazer and on the rear brake bracket it's four-wheel drive 
rear brake bracket, I need the uh, slide pin bolt boots. Oh, for the caliper bracket boots? Yes. Not the pins? Correct. Just the boots? Just the boots. Okay. Now, single piston caliper. You set that aside for Charlie. I'll be down there in about five minutes. Sure, Charlie. I'll have a full at the counter waiting for you. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah, just got back from O'Reilly's Auto Parts. Not a sponsor. I don't, currently don't have any sponsors. Currently not interested in any sponsors. We got our little rubber boots. They move around really, really, really easy. They look pretty good. Well greased the last time. These were worked on. And they're wiping down and cleaning up quite nicely. No uh, excessive wear or grooves in it. That's good. Get this back one. Same thing. Then we'll clean these up. And that pin came out looking really nice. We'll clean these out. Let's get this apart. Every tool makes a hammer. Knock these out. Prop the hardware clips out. All of this is trash. You can see the uneven wear in these. Worn right down into the rotor. But these get stuck because of the weird thing that they do with this metal right here. I don't completely understand that, but probably to help keep it from sinking into the hardware. God, I don't like the feel of this. I don't like the feel of this. The clip on the bottom of this that holds this one piece brake shoe in place is broken. Or it's bent, I'm not really sure which, but it's not holding the brake pad or the brake shoe. Brake shoe doesn't seem to be unevenly worn, but. These are not the easiest things in the world to work with. You got two holes, the two holes in this case were closest to the front of the vehicle, so we'll try to remember that. There's a little metal clip down here, and in this case the clip's not, not broken, but it is bent. So this is, this is that metal clip that holds just inside the edge of the brake shoe. So this right here is supposed to be back further and holding that piece in place. So we're going to try to push this back. You do not want to break this bolt. You break this bolt off, then this is in the way of trying to drill it out. It's, it's, a, it's a total nightmare been there done that don't ever want to do it again it's just it's really too much of a pain in the butt I'm going to get you guys in here close enough to see this, but there's a tiny little bump up near the top of this, and if I push on that little bump, I can make this clip bend down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on that spot right there, and just... Do that on both sides. Still got to close that up. 
bit more. Just enough to get it to hold that shoe snugly, but you got to be really, really careful with these because if these break, like I said, you got to pull this axle out in order to be able to machine that out. I did a Chevy 1500 pickup truck that was actually worse than this in its design. This was even harder to get at, but nonetheless, you know, it's not perfect, but better than it was. Managed to grab the lip of this with the vice grip so I can get this out. Threads right into the paper towel. Put a little bit of grease into the threads. And literally work it right down into the threads. And then go ahead and thread that back down inside to the adjuster make sure everything turns nice and smooth and easily do not seat it all the way down almost but not all the way then you can go ahead and put that back in and once everything moves nice and easy you can go on to the next step shoe back on again the two little holes towards the front and into the clip on the bottom first and get your top into the adjuster and go ahead and get the bottom into the adjuster also Adjust this, take the slack out of it. That'll hold everything where it's supposed to be. Now we can grab the brand new rotor, aka drum. And clean this one out inside and out. paper towel real good helps to cut down on the waste Some of that's probably rust deposits left from the inside of this rotor. All right. Now, I don't want to get fluid film all over the brakes in the back. I just want to get it all over the... enough to get a little coating on there. Check this for fit. Okay. 
time. If it doesn't go on easy, do not, do not force it on. If it does not go on easy, do not force it on because if you try pulling this back off and this is stuck inside of here, you will wreck that spring, you'll dislodge this, you make, you make yourself a headache. Just make sure everything's centered first. This is going to be an on and off and on and off and on and off several times. So that goes down all, almost all the way, but not quite. That means the adjuster is causing this to drag just a little bit. So we're going to back this back off just a hair. back on, wiggle it around again. This, this takes several tries sometimes. Okay, all the way on. Back off fairly easily. I'm going to snug it back up some now. Just because this thing can float around and do kind of weird stuff want to check it several times but again if you get to the point where you have to push to make it go on your shoe is too large you're gonna to have to back that back off or you'll pull it with you trying to get this back off and right now I'd say that's probably just a hair over adjusted so we're going to back that back down again, just a couple clicks. All right, because the last thing you want to do is have that brake dragging. All right, so now, spend two lug nuts on for now. caliper bracket wire brush hold the drill upside down between my knees don't have a vice just because I don't feel like getting smacked in the face going the other direction Pull down on it and push up. Now, get the inside of this cleaned out. Well, that doesn't fit, so I'm not going to force it. Just spray kind of really light, and you can actually fill the hole up. You spray hard on it, and you're going to end up getting a bath. Again, safety protection for your eyes or you're going to get sprayed in the face. I'm not putting any pressure on this. I'm just basically dragging it up and down inside. Combination of giving me a feel of what the inside of it is like, as well as moving the grease that's in there around. Same thing over on this side. You can hear the machining marks in there, so it's in it's in good shape. And dump that back out onto the pet trainer. Twirl up a paper towel. In it, you can work it right down into the hole. I like to keep going until either it gets so tight that I can't move it or it starts to ball up on me, which right now I'm all the way down in. 
So now I can change direction on it. Start twisting it the other way. And that'll flip the paper towel around inside, trapping all of the grease that's in there. Just keep spinning it until you're ready to pull it out. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not, but all the way down in there. It's all nice and cleaned out now. And just do the same thing over on the other side. But this, this is designed more or less for you guys that are at home that want to do your own brake job. You've got the time to do the OCD stuff. You now make sure you get it as, as good, as close to new as possible. Put some fresh grease in there. You know, about that much. Same thing on the other side, about that much. Make your pins, work your pins in and out. Now, some of these you'll have a little piece of rubber on here. Make sure you put that back into the corresponding hole when you put it back together. Take your pin, rotate it as you're spinning it down in. That way there, it works the grease down, it distributes it evenly. Get all the way down to the bottom, you'll start getting what they call a hydro lock. Is that little bit of grease that's in there. The grease comes all the way up and out. Now everything in there is completely coated. Grab your brand new boots. I had to double check these a couple times in the parts store because when I pulled these out and I'm like, those don't look like uh, like that, but they actually do when you stretch them out. I'll pull one pin back out. I feel a little bit of vacuum lock. That's good. Slide this up and on. So it's all the way around the top of your bolt first. Then slide this down and in. Again, always rotating. Put pressure on it, keep rotating until you can slide. Let's see if I can get you on here. This outer part into place. Now note how the lip folds back out. That's not folded in, it's folded out. And it wrinkles when you pull on it, which means you got a good seal. Now just go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. And again, same thing on the other side, just make the square lip stick out. Get your wrinkles, you got a good seal. There we go. Now we put the caliper bracket back after we clean all of this stuff up. And just file this out. This is a wider groove than most of like the, the cars and stuff like that. So you can get away with a regular flat file a little easier on this. I've got a special file that was made in Germany that Eric O from Southman Auto talks about in a couple of his videos. A really handy file. Fits right into the groove almost perfectly on a lot of vehicles. I just didn't feel like digging it out. It's kind of a specialty, so it sits by itself. You know, we're not trying to take down metal again, just to get the rust off of it. Might even be a advantageous idea to do this, pile this down before doing this boot, just in case, because the last thing you want to do is slice a hole in that boot. You also want to make sure that you're in contact with both sides at the same time so that you're level. If you start going at an angle like this, you'll cause problems with your uh, with your brake pads. You don't want any rust built up on here or on here that's going to squeeze your brake pads and this right here is the landing surface that the pressure is applied to it's always critical to make sure that those surfaces are the cleanest the rest doesn't really matter you know we'll coat this surface right here with the anti-seize make 
you know, all the way down in the grooves and everything. You know, basically everything that I've ever seen coated in anti seize doesn't rust. So, the whole name of the game here is to stop the rust underneath these hardware clips. And yeah, I know most of you guys down south don't know what in the world I'm talking about or why. Well, we have this wonderful thing called salt. We salt the roads in the winter, and that salt gets blasted into every component of your car. You mix salt, water, and iron, and you have immediate oxidization. You go ahead and wipe all of the uh, excess off, because you don't want to get any of this on the rotor. So then that'll end up on your brake pads. All right. Once you've got all of those coated, lightly coated, uh, grab the brake shoes, brake pads, I should say, hardware. There's only four clips in here, so we don't have to play guessing games with it, which is really nice. Before we try mashing them down in, let's make sure they at least look the same. And they do. You see that little bit of a forward curve in them? That's actually to hold the ear, this ear of the brake pad, to keep it from rattling around. But once these things, this metal here swells and pinches this, and jams it in this, this doesn't rattle and it doesn't even move. So make sure that all of these surfaces right here are, are level, they're clean. Go ahead and put, put, place, place your hardware Make sure it fits all the way down in properly. The little edges in here that hold it in place. Again, make sure everything actually seats. This hardware is a little cheap. Make sure you get all the anti-seize off your hands. Otherwise, you'll get it all over the brake pads, and what's exposed to the outside is not going to look too good with greasy, silver gray, put fingerprints all over it. Now, all four of these should also have squealers, and they do not. We have two with squealers, two without. So, we'll start off with the easy one. Where do the out work? See? I can't even do that right. Where do these go? These go on the outboard. Where do these go? These go on the inboard. Where does the squealer go? On the leading edge. So in this case, the wheel rotates this way going forward. This would be the leading edge. Except that this is going to be on the inside, which would put this wrong place. So it's this one here. Goes right there. This one here goes to the other side. Back in the box with one for the outside. Bolts in this way, leading edge up here, put it in the bottom first, slide it into the top next, and then do the same thing with the outside, the outside one you can actually kind of put it in sideways and rotate it into place. Make sure that they do move. And go ahead and take the assembly and bolt. doing it this way with the uh, brake pads already in the caliper. Okay, well, you can do it Eric's way, or in this case, I'm just going to do it the way I'm used to doing it, because I am not used to doing it that way. 
Sorry while I get in your way here, and I told you I was going to drop those pins, or those hardware clips. Inboard. Ah, uh, I should just stop recording now. This is, this is... Real life people, real life. Yeah. I just bleep out the swearing. Well, the bottom bolt's going in nice. This top bolt didn't want to go so nice. I'm gonna clean these threads up a little bit. This is just gross. There's a spot that's going to make this thing really ugly. Let's see, where is it? Right there. The threads right here got mashed at some point in time. Uh, oh well. Just to make this not get stuck in there on somebody else. So I can put this. Where did I put the breaker bar? Alright. Found the breaker bar. We do want to make sure these are tight. Alright. Now we can go ahead and the upper clip back in again. In this case, the uh, anti sheath is actually helping to hold it in place. All right, squealer on the inboard. in here. Sometimes when they're tight like that, set seat the top all the way in, pull the bottom out just enough to catch with a hammer and give it a like that. And if that doesn't do it, repeat the process with the top one. If that doesn't do it, ouch. That's still tight. So somewhere in here, we've got an imperfection. So what I'm going to do is show you guys what happens to these blasted things. This surface right here, you can see the little step between this groove and the little step between that groove. Those little imperfections right there are what's causing this to hang up right now. So you take a file clean up this area and then coat them with anti-seize. So I don't want to take any more metal down off of that caliper. So go straight across, nice and flat. Make sure you stay level. This, this, this takes a little skill. You stay perpendicular to the pad at all times. So when you're going across, make sure you're level, perfect T, straight across. Same thing on the other side. 
See this side I can feel a little wobble this way, which means this is uneven. So if I've already gone across this just a couple times, you can see where, where the file has hit and where it hasn't. Well, you want to get that pretty much smooth all the way across. Normally, you should never have to do this. But, not every part is made quite the same. Should be wearing gloves so I don't get little metal filings in my skin, but you make sure everything is square. Still got a little bit of a lip there. And, and I won't kid you, it can, it's a little tricky to keep these square and try to do this by hand. If you've got a means on the bench to be able to do this, probably be better off. I wouldn't recommend putting a brake shoe right into a, the clamp of a vise, but you can do what you got to do, I guess. Now, try again. And it feels a lot better. Now, also keep in mind the back side of this clip right here is a spring forward, so it's designed to hold these tight. So you're going to have a little bit of resistance in here normally as it is. But when they're in place like this, you should be able to push them in towards that spring enough to see a separation, then they're okay. The entire part that's getting stuck is right here. Now we're going to coat this with a little bit of anti-seize. It's like that. Nothing special. Idea is coat the metal that you exposed. I'm gonna go ahead and put that back in. I would recommend doing this with all four brake pads. that and he sees all over everything else now I got a special treat for you guys I just ordered these the other day Add a new tool to the collection. It's a Lyle 25750 brake depressor tool. This is made for the double piston caliper. But just for ha ha's, we're going to show how it works even on a single. Pull this off. Now, what I'm talking about as far as something special is right here inside this box, I got another one. Guess what I'm going to be doing with that one? That's right. Somebody out there is going to get lucky and I'm going to give it away to them. I just haven't figured out how, where, when, you know, all the little particulars. But uh, we'll be getting into that soon enough. That was really easy. I don't know if I'm going to do this as a uh, number of subscribers deal or if I'm going to do this as random 
but uh, I'll try to include a, more, a little more information in the next couple of videos. There's all these little legalities and everything else that you got to figure out what you can and can't do. And I know already that I'm not going to be able to do anything outside the United States. So anybody outside the United States, I'm apologizing in advance. But uh, find those little bolts. Get everything here all tightened up. Don't forget your hook. And clean up. Well, first, yeah, first we gotta tighten up that 14. sound like they might get noisy. I'm going to pull those back off. I'm going to put a little anti-seize on the inside of these just to keep them from making noise. Go ahead, clean up everything on this side. Move over to the other side. And again, the other side's probably gonna be all the same thing. Clean everything up, adjust everything. Your brake pads, resurface the edges of the ears. Uh, gonna be also advising the owner that he's got some holes in his muffler. And if you guys found that one helpful, please comment, like, subscribe, you know, all the usual. Share it with your friends. Um, thanks for joining me. Have a good evening, and remember, you've got no more excuses. Pick up those wrenches. side looks like. No lining material down there. Nothing in there. This thing is all the way out. There's carbon all over the outside of everything. Looks like the brake dust. This rotor's worn right down to nothing. So we'll get this side done.